Thank you for logging on to Toss50.com, the other side of 50. I'm David Schwartz, and we are here. I'm a criminal defense attorney. Uh, I've been an attorney and a former prosecutor for 15 years, and we're here to interview legendary criminal defense attorney Ike Sorkin, the attorney who is most known today for representing Bernie Madoff. So how did you get involved with, the, uh, with wanting to be a criminal defense attorney? Uh, when I was in uh, law school, I spent my first summer as an intern many, many years ago, 1967, in the district attorney's office in Brooklyn, uh, and uh, worked with assistant district attorneys on murder cases, felony murder cases, narcotics, uh, rape cases, assault, all the street crime stuff. And then in my second summer of law school, I was an intern at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York, where I worked half the summer in the narcotics unit and the other half summer in the securities frauds unit. And working in the securities frauds unit, I said, this is it, this is what I want to do. And then when I got to law school, I went to the SEC, and then a little over three years after that, I went back to the U.S. Attorney's Office as an assistant U.S. Attorney. But that that first summer in the DA's office, I knew this, that's what I wanted to do. Right, in fact, that's my office. I, I'm a graduate of the Brooklyn DA's office as well. Who was the DA back then? A fellow by the name of Aaron Kuda. Okay, and then Eugene Gold took over after, yeah, after I, him? I, yeah, I was only there for that summer. Did, did that type of work interest you at any time? You, you know, the, not the white-collar work, but the, the blue-collar, the real street crimes type, type of work? Oh, sure. But, I mean, when I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, we, we prosecuted what is known as white-collar crime, but we had uh, a whole slew of organized crime guys in white-collar crime. So it was blue-collar defendants and white-collar crime. Uh, and I spent uh, uh, a number of years, uh, well, I wouldn't say a number of years, about a year and a half in the U.S. Attorney's Office trying narcotics cases, bank robbery, um, uh, mail fraud, uh, tax evasion, food stamp violations, assault, and then I moved over to the frauds unit, the Securities now, Frauds Unit. Now, prior to going to the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, where were you before that? The Securities and Exchange Commission. I went to the SEC right out of law school. And uh, can you tell us about the, that experience? It was a wonderful experience. Um, what made it wonderful was that I learned very quickly not to listen to the lawyers, because the lawyers didn't know anything. I listened to the investigators and the examiners. In those days, the investigators and examiners had uh, come from the, the, quote, the street. They had spent 20 or 30 years on the street. In fact, a couple of them were there in 1929 uh, during the crash, and they knew how the markets worked. Um, some of them, I don't even think, had college degrees. They were really street guys who knew how the markets worked. And while the lawyers could easily go to the books and interpret a case and read about the law, they knew how it functions. And, and by listening to them and learning from them, that really was the, uh, was the turning point. You, you were in the SEC in the late 60s? Uh, I was there from 68 to 71, and I went to the attorney's office, then I went back in 1984 to run the New York office of the SEC. So, so can you tell us about the SEC from your experiences from the late 60s to when you ran it in the 80s till today in the 2000s? Uh, how many hours you got? Well, <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> Things were much simpler in those days. Um, uh, we tried uh, a lot of manipulation, stock manipulations in the over-the-counter market. Uh, the first uh, criminal insider trading case was 1978. So there weren't any criminal insider trading cases in those days. There were some books and records cases. There were net back office cases. There were sales of unregistered stock. But things were very simple. I think what has e what evolved over the years, uh, which led us right to where we are today, is how complex the security markets have gotten uh, in terms of the instruments that are marketed, uh, the risk that uh, the street took, uh, and I think the biggest problem the SEC has had over the last 15 or so years is staying ahead of, which they haven't, of what's going on on the street. The complexity, the risk, um, the, uh, the structured finance products that are sold, the SEC just could not stay ahead of that curve. And I think that's what, uh, where the regulatory failures were. And uh, today, are we seeing a, a change in the SEC today, in oh, your yes. opinion? Are they catching up at all, or are they behind? I think they're catching up. They, they have restructured the entire enforcement division. Um, the fellow who is now running the uh, division of enforcement is a former assistant U.S. attorney. 
um, who I had some cases with when I was a defense, as a defense lawyer, and he was a prosecutor. Uh, the head of the New York office is also a former assistant U.S. attorney. The number two man in the Division of Enforcement is a former assistant U.S. attorney. So they're bringing that expertise, their uh, litigation experience, their enforcement experience to the SEC. Uh, they've also restructured uh, many of the areas that uh, obviously created problems for the SEC. Risk, uh, examinations, um, uh, uh, the, the, the structured finance instruments, all of those now I think they're trying to catch up on. They're hiring people who have experience. In fact, uh, what I said a little while ago about learning from people who are on the street, they're hiring people from the street, or oh, that's at least what they've said. Uh, who understand uh, the products that are being marketed and hopefully the risk that the firms took which brought us to where we are today. Do you, do you think post Bernie Madoff, your notorious client, um, we're going to see an over-regulation now of these markets by the SEC? Do you think they're going to, because of the extent of that, of that scheme, um, do you think we're going to see a, a complete overreaction on the part of the SEC. I think you have to put the Madoff case in perspective. It was a classic Ponzi scheme, and the SEC, had they asked four questions, could have stopped it in its tract, tracks. And the four questions that they should have asked, um, number one, if the trades are taking place overseas, what banks was the firm trading? The, the question was never asked. Second question, if you're buying billions of dollars worth of securities, where are the cust securities custodied? I mean, you know, these are physical securities. Where are they custodied? Third question that wasn't asked uh, is, uh, where are what we call the DTC sheets, the Depository Trust Corporation sheets, which would show the contra parties? Because as we now know, there were no trades. Uh, if there were trades, there would be a contra party, and the DTC sheets would show that. And the fourth thing, that they didn't ask was, if you are trading billions of dollars worth of securities, you're being charged for the execution. Where are the ledgers that would reflect the execution? Those questions were not asked. And had they asked those questions, um, this thing could have been stopped. The, the point I'm trying to make is, it was a failure of the examination process. That's what it was. And you don't need uh, you know, extensive regulation. You don't need hundreds of people working uh, in, in these areas to discover what a better examination would have uncovered. With respect to uh, the subprime issues, the collateralized uh, debt obligations, credit default swaps, the structured finance securities, uh, which is another piece of where we are today. The Ponzi scheme didn't bring us here. Bernie Madoff did not bring us to foreclosures, didn't bring us to people losing their homes didn't bring us to where we are today in terms of the markets. Um, what did was, as I said earlier, uh, the failure of the street and the SEC to understand risk. To that extent, I don't think there will be over-regulation, I think. Changing the examination process, changing how they um, uh, view risk, uh, that will go a long way towards uh, uh, fixing it up. I don't think there'll be over-regulation there. Uh, Ponzi schemes are Ponzi schemes. If you do the right examination, particularly so with hedge funds, and hedge funds will be regulated. If you do the right type of examination um, with more people, you're going to get there. People want to know, how could you represent that guy?